Hello, guys. Welcome to the show. I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I'm here with Yancey Lin. And today is the day we are talking more about the decimated comic book industry. A lot of factors are happening all at once, uh, all around. Uh, some of it's a lot of SJW type of cultural, like, push on making characters gay that clearly are not gay. That's a big effect. But one of the big effects actually happened with the original COVID shutdown. And that had to do with uh, the, the shutdown in the American comic book industry, uh, pr primarily with Diamond. Uh, what that caused is a ripple effect of publishers leaving Diamond Comics and going to other distributors like Penguin, Random House, stuff like that. UCS, uh, a couple other distributors were, were set up and stuff like that. Lunar, basically it became a domino effect. We ended up with Marvel and DC leaving and uh, Image criticizing and then eventually Image Comics leaving. I've been told uh, recently that the Diamond catalog only has two pages featuring Image books in it, like that the catalog's looking worse and worse. So what does this mean for retailers? Uh, some retailers are getting better shipping rates through uh, Random House and stuff. But one of the big effects that's happening to the uh, comic retailers is they don't have a sales chart to order from anymore. Meaning like uh, for people who don't know, the American comic book industry actually pulls most of the sales data um, of books because publishers really don't share it. So it's all speculation that roughly like um, Batman sells 100,000 copies. But once one of these, these publishers start to leave Diamond, and those numbers, it becomes really hard to pinpoint what the books really are selling month in and month out. And uh, one of the effects, and maybe people took it for granted, is this was a big tool for comic shops to understand what to order, what was trending and whatnot. So let me give you guys a bit of the background. When the COVID shutdown happened, Diamond was pressured into shutting down their distribution as well by a few comic book retailers. DC was the one that actually said, nah, we're not doing that. This is our backup plan. We're going with this two distributors now to distribute our books while Diamond stays shut down. See ya. Now, of course, all the other publishers like Marvel and all these image that came around condemned DC saying, oh, how dare you abandon Diamond. But before the year was even out, Diamond announced their own deal with Penguin Random House to say, yeah, you know what? We're going to be distributing our regular books and eventually our weekly floppies through Penguin Random House. Of course, you know, we still do some through Diamond until whenever, and then that's it. A long here image that said, oh my gosh, the two big temples of the comic book industry have left Diamond Distribution. Don't worry, we'll stick around. We believe in you, Diamond. And next thing you know, last year we heard image said, yeah, adios. So what is the result of all these big guys all going off to different distributors? Well, one thing is, as Shane said, the distributor, Diamond Distributor themselves, are not very open about what the sales numbers are of their books. Everything is all speculation. But at the very least, they did have a list of saying, well, these are the top selling books for the month. So you can more or less guess what actually would sell in your store if you were actually to buy it. Because there's a list coming from the guy that's distributing all the floppies in the industry. Suddenly, there's not just one guy distributing in the industry anymore. You have multiple distributors, which is Penguin, Luna, and Diamond, and of course, a bunch of other small distributors. And you think they're sharing the sales data with each other? Of course they're not. They won't even share the sales data with the people buying the books. Why would they? All right. So what this leads to is that now retailers are forced to look at all these sales numbers from different publishers and try and guess, well, okay, um, Spider-Man sells well over here. But it's kind of saying low down on Diamond. But maybe that's because Diamond's not the exclusive distributor anymore. So maybe that's why it's not saying so well. You see, there's sort of this mental juggling happening, trying to guess what sells and what doesn't. So what does that lead to? That leads to distributors saying, let's go with the old and gold. We know we'll sell Batman. We know we'll sell maybe Walking Dead and all this stuff. But then when it comes to new titles, especially creator-owned titles, they'll be like, ugh, we have no idea what sells or what doesn't sell. Better not take a risk. And to be honest, it's all a massive load of books for a comic shop to have an understanding of, okay? It's one thing if there's an event that engulfs like half of the Marvel books, then they can either gauge that event order accordingly. But when it's like all individual out of continuity books, which is a lot of what Dark Horse publishes and Image Comics and stuff like that, they would have to really take time and read each one of those individual titles. So some creator-owned, some just Star Wars books, Predator books, whatever, alien books, 
which now are Marvel Comics, by the way, uh, they would have to individually read these and see if they want to invest in them. There's a couple of things that happen here. I've known a lot of retailers um, in my time and working in comics, but usually comic retailers used to be and are still big comic book fans. That means there may be a generation gap, meaning that they grew up reading comics maybe when they were in their teens, and now they always dreamed of having a comic shop, but maybe what they read when they were 13 isn't the stuff that they would read today, but that's the stuff Marvel and DC are producing. So they're kind of stuck in this vicious cycle of, uh, well, do I listen to what Marvel and DC tell me to order? Because they're going to tell me to order everything. And they're especially going to tell me to up my orders. I mean, Marvel's not going to tell them, hey, this DC book over here is really healthy for your store. Like, so there's really no real gauge for them. And and again, this article basically points out an interesting thing. A lot of retailers got together. That some real numbers were kind of thrown out to them by a publisher in a, in a group. And um, they were shocked. Some were shocked it was even selling that well or because the only thing they have is their experience in their store. So for people that don't know, like comic shops basically order whole lists. And then from there, they kind of gauge what they should order for their wall. I would say about 90% of retailers do that. So they're let, basically letting their customer base tell them what to order. Now, that sort of a stable mindset, not to get you know too many books you can't sell, but it could harm you if you're basically restricting your customer base off your already existing customer. Meaning if there is a new hit that comes along, what if your customers aren't about the new hit that comes along? Then you're, you're just, there's a hole on your wall where the new hit that came along should be. Well, let me tell it from a different perspective. So I am a toy retailer. So what happens is that my distributor wants me to know what their best selling toys are. Why? Because there's this thing known as a production lead time. I need to be able to get my order in, in time to be able to get the order so that I can sell it in time for Christmas. So in the same way, this is how it works for the comic book industry as well. They have a cutoff date for you to put in your order because then they'll say, yep, we're sending this number to the printer and that's it. So that's how it's going to work. And then if you're going to wait for a customer to come in and say, oh my gosh, I heard about this book, this number one book, and it's so good. Why don't you have it? And it's like, well, you missed the train on it already. By the time the customer comes and tells you, I want it, you're too late to get it. So... That's why sales charts are really important. But the fact that is that with multiple distributors, multiple printers, they are not going to, you know, collaborate their data and help you. So where does this put comic retailers now? Yeah, at this stage, are basically guessing, hoping the internet will amount actually translates to sales, which we realize actually doesn't. So this this is basically a speculator's market, especially when it meaning speculating what can sell. As comic retailers really don't have a gauge to uh, see publishing trends. And just because there's word of mouth about a character being brave and bold and coming out as, as gay and a few issues selling out, that doesn't mean that the series is selling off of the writing or artwork or, or can even sustain sales. So it's really a guesser's market if you're a comic book uh, retailer. But anyways, guys, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Let me know what you think about you know, comic shops in the future, especially not having a gauge on what's actually selling as publishers hide their numbers. And Extend Level Up is up. If you guys will go check this out, we have a lot of featured tiers to check out on nonlivescomics.com. This is my awesome comic book about video games, obviously. Three gamers test out a mysterious new video game. When they get log out of the game, they bring forward their avatars, their abilities in the video game into the real world, and it's a race against time to get the game back in the game. If you guys will, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We'll catch you guys again with another video. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. 
My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.